As you're probably starting to notice from the robotics videos, robotics software has a lot of math in it. And that math often involves numbers that we can tune to tweak our robot's behavior. It's super important that we're able to change these values without having to rebuild our entire code base. And it's often handy to be able to change them while the code is actually running. ROS gives us these capabilities through parameters. These are named values associated with individual nodes that other parts of the ROS system can modify through a public interface. Each node declares the parameters that it uses, and then other nodes can use special services to read and write the values of those parameters. This gives us a simple interface for runtime tunable values in our nodes. Let's see how to add some parameters to a simple node. Here's the node we'll be starting with. Right now, all it does is publish a little hello string message every second. To do that, we've created a publisher associated with the demo topic, topic name, and I've created a timer. This timer is running every one second, and it's calling the timer callback function on this object. In that timer callback, we're creating a string message, setting that message's data, and then publishing the message. Let's add two parameters to this node. One parameter will control how frequently the messages get published, and the second parameter will change the string contents that actually get published. The first step to using a parameter in our code is to declare that parameter using the declare parameter function. And this is what that looks like. We're calling the function declare parameter. We have to tell it the type of the parameter that we're going to use, in this case, a standard string. We give that parameter a name, here we're calling it message data, and then we give it a default value, which we'll just set to our hello text. To actually use the value of this parameter, we can use the getParameter method. So now I've gone into the timer callback, and instead of hard coding our message data to the hello string, we're now calling getParameter, we're giving it the name of the parameter we want, in this case message data, and then we need to grab the value of that parameter, assuming it's a string object. Parameters can hold several types of data, so the thing we get back from the getParameter function is what's called a variant. A variant is just an object that can hold values of several different types. So to get something useful out of it, we need to tell it what type we're interested in. In this case, we know the parameter is going to be a string, so we call the asString function. That's all it takes to get a dynamic parameter that will update at runtime. We need to start by declaring the parameter, and then whenever we're ready to use its value, we use getParameter to get the current value. Behind the scenes, the ROS event system is handling any incoming parameter change requests, so we will always get the latest value for that message data parameter every time we call getParameter. Let's add our second parameter to control how often this message gets published. To do that, I've called declareParameter again. This time, we'll be creating an integer parameter with the name timerDuration and the default value of 1. Now the declareParameter function also returns the value of the parameter. This is useful for parameters like this, where we're only going to read it once at the beginning and then not update it later on. This value will take into consideration any parameter overrides coming from launch files or the command line, which we'll talk about in a future video. For now, I simply save that value into a new variable called timer duration, and inside of our create wall timer call, I've replaced the hard coded one second duration, and now we're reading the timer duration variable. Now we can start this node with different values for the timer duration parameter, and that will change the frequency that these messages get published. That's all the code we need to write, so let's crack open a terminal and build our workspace. And with that built, we'll open two new terminals to run this demo. In the first terminal, we'll run our demo node, and in the second terminal, we'll keep an eye on the demo topic to see how the messages are changing. We'll start by running with the defaults. So we run our node, and then we echo our topic. And we see that once a second, we're getting the string message with the data hello. Now let's stop this node and change that timer duration parameter to slow down our topic. To set a parameter from the command line when we run a node, we need to give it the ROS args flag to tell it that the following arguments will be related to ROS. We'll use the dash p flag to tell it we're setting a parameter. And then we'll give it the parameter name, timer duration, colon equals the value of the parameter. In this case, we'll just double it to two. Now when we run our node, it's using that new timer duration value and should be publishing our messages once every two seconds instead of the default once every one second. Of course, we can't tell that with just echoing it, so let's use the topic hertz command to investigate the frequency of our topic. 
And here we can see that the average rate is 0.5 Hz, which corresponds to one message every two seconds. So our timer parameter is working. Let's use RQt's dynamic reconfigure plugin to modify that message data parameter and see that change in real time. I'll stop the Hertz command and go back to echoing the topic. Then in our first terminal, I'll open a new tab, source the underlay setup script, and run RQt. Now we can go to Plugins, Configuration, Dynamic Reconfigure to load the Dynamic Reconfigure plugin. On the left, we can see a list of node names. We'll select our Parameters Demo node, and now we bring up a widget that lets us see and control the parameters of our node. We can see both our message data parameter and our timer duration parameter, as well as the default use sim time parameter that we talked about in the simulation video. Let's change our hello message to say something else. When I hit enter, that parameter is set and we see the new message, hello RoboJackets, start echoing out over the topic. Now, one important thing to note here is that we can change our message data parameter at runtime because we are continuously calling the get parameter function. The timer duration parameter won't have any effect if we change it during runtime because our code is only checking it once at startup and not reading that parameter value again. So it's important to decide when you're writing the code for your parameters, is this a parameter that only needs to be considered at startup or does this parameter need to be responsive to changes that come across at runtime? So that's the basics of how to use parameters. There's a lot more you can do with this interface and you can learn more from the RCLCPP API documentation.